your creative process can surprise you and 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 in trying to just do something unusual i accidentally made something really special in episode six udun there's a huge theme that plays as galadriel chases down adar and then halbrand slash sauron arrives to assist nolwa mate what was it like crafting such an immensely epic piece and what about that scene for you demanded such an elevation I love that you asked me about that because that piece is one of the weird little oddballs of this season. I had crafted 17 character themes that I use throughout this show. Very literally, if a character's on screen, you hear their theme. Um, I was quite strict about it. But mm -hmm. that's what you're describing in episode six. Something about it felt so special. At long last, Galadriel was crossing paths with Adar, and Halbrand is charging in as well. There's something cataclysmic about it, and, and it's in the middle of a cataclysmic episode. I thought if I used anybody's theme in particular, it would somehow diminish mm -hmm. the sequence. It felt like it was bigger than the sum of its parts. It's not just a Galadriel moment. It's like a moment in the history of Middle-earth itself. So I wrote this thing. It's just a thing. I, I, I wrote uh, this choir fanfare with these urgent chugging strings, and it was just supposed to be a one-off moment, but it ended up accidentally being one of the coolest things I wrote all season. And in fact, at Comic-Con, when I was announced and the show did its big panel, I, I got to write an overture to introduce <laughs> the Rings of Power. And I can open that overture with any piece of music. I could use Galadriel's theme. I could use Sauron's theme. I realized it was that. It was yes. that moment from episode six. So uh, that's one of those funny situations where your creative process can surprise you. And, and in trying to just do something unusual, I accidentally made something really special. Yeah, I can listen to that theme all day. It's like, it's so big. Like you were saying, it feels like Middle Earth, Lord of the Rings, like that's what you really imagine. I follow up on that. So the title in Elven translates to noble or brave warrior. And given the kind of complicated nature, I would say, of everybody in that scene and like the idea that it's not about any one of them, who do you think that noble warrior is referring to? That's one of the reasons we chose that text is that it's very ambiguous. Yeah. Um, Obviously, it could be Galadriel, but there's layers to this. It could be Adar. He is, I believe, trying to help his people. His people are the orcs. And then later in that same episode, there's a great scene with Galadriel confronting him after she's captured him. The end result of the scene you're describing, she captures mm -hmm. him. And she reveals a hatred for orcs that is as twisted as any other character we meet. And Adar calls her out on it. Uh, it's one of my favorite moments in the season. So in a way, like, you could interpret that in any way you want. Um, and that's what I really loved about it. And, and I think that that's part of why we chose that text is that I didn't want to root it in, in any yeah. one character. So music can also be really cheeky and more subtle from like the extreme of that theme to like more quiet notes. I, what One moment that caught me was when Elrond was confessing to Durin that he had lost their contest on purpose. There's like these really sneaky notes that are almost as loud as the dialogue when it comes to conveying the meaning. Did yeah. you have a favorite moment where the music kind of interjected into the conversation in that way? Every scene with Elrond and Durin was like that. That's one of them. I, I think if I had to pick my favorite where I thought the themes were really working, but also I, I just felt so inspired and I felt like my skill and experience were allowing me to just deftly weave along the drama was when um, in episode seven, they're sitting down and Elrond fesses up. Yeah. And uh, and basically says, the fate of my entire race is in your hands. And Durin, uh, Owain, plays him so beautifully. Ultimately, he agrees to help. Yes. But he does it in such a fun way. And before his mouth even moves to speak, his eyes shift. And then he <laughs> says, Say that again. 
it's funny because I believe I'm being very subtle, but you're right. It's like a sledgehammer. When the <laughs> score, when the scene is that quiet and the stakes are that high emotionally and the movements, like the difference between your eye being here and looking 10 degrees that way imply a huge revelation. The score has to be just right. It has to be so small that you can barely breathe. And of course, you're hearing an orchestra of 80 people playing and everybody's playing quietly. I love that. I love that restraint. I love that moment and the ability to 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 shift my focus from a canvas so sprawling and so epic to be able to support a moment that is not only emotional and powerful and quiet, but also funny. It's so many things. I um, I, I was really grateful for that opportunity. Speaking of like those little subtleties, do you think that you kind of hid any messages in any of your themes in their constructions that the audience maybe hasn't picked up on yet? Well, the audience at large probably didn't realize that the Sauron theme is another character's theme turned backwards. Mm -hmm. I think their brain noticed because they heard both of these themes throughout the entire season and at a certain point mm -hmm. they're put together. But with that said, you know, the audience, some of the audience figured that out. There sure. are there are listeners out there that pieced uh, together a lot of little messages. For me, music is ultimately a subliminal art form. And I think that over the course of the show, everyone will feel the messages that the music is telling mm -hmm. you. You're going to feel the changes in some of these places and, and some of these characters. And that's why I think so much of the, my writing in the first season was very blunt. I'm telling you about the might of Casa Doom, the might of Numenor. Um, then there's scenes where the Numenor theme, you know, Farazan is talking to his son and sort of sh revealing that he's a very political animal. He's a shark. The Numenor theme comes back, but it's not mighty anymore. There's other sides to it. That's what I love about having thematic writing and scores, that it allows you to throw in all these subliminal messages that I, I, I hope most people don't pick up on intellectually. I don't want you thinking about mm -hmm. thematic construction while you're watching the <laughs> show, but it's there. It's it's all there. The story is all there in the music. And I, and I do think that that, for me as a composer, that's the great joy of working on the Rings of Power. Speaking of all those character themes, was there one that just like came to you? Just you saw the character and like you knew that's how they sounded? I, Casa Doom and the theme for the dwarves came to me pretty fast. <laughs> I feel like that's a people I relate to. Mm -hmm. They are a people I understand. Seeing them at their height was almost like a dream come true for me. Um, and, and uh, you know, we know them in the Lord of the Rings trilogy, both the books and the movies, as a displaced people, mm -hmm. as a sad people, as a, as a people that are struggling to retain their homeland. They remind me of a lot of displaced populations that exist today. Uh, and I relate to that personally. So the idea of seeing them at their height, that was very inspiring. And wanting to draw from these traditions that we've heard hinted at mm -hmm. by Howard Shore in the Lord of the Rings movies, you hear them in their full power in the Rings of Power, That's that was, that was pretty awesome. I don't want to say it was easy, <laughs> but it did pour out sure. of my brain fairly quickly. Amazing. Okay, well, I think that's all the time we have. So thank you so much. I loved all your answers and I love the music of Rings of Power and I can't wait to hear what season two will sound like. So thank you so much. Thanks, Ro.